A uh, special thanks to Ed and uh, Alistair and everyone at O'Reilly for inviting us and letting us talk to you about an exciting new initiative that Drew and I are launching called Data Without Borders. Uh, slides up here. Oh, I'm going past these already. There we go. Yeah. So it won't come as a surprise, I think, to anyone in uh, this audience that we are living at an incredibly exciting time in human history. Uh, the data revolution is upon us. We are generating more data about our world than we ever have before. We're generating data about every transaction that we take parts in, and we are creating huge, vast human networks to share that information with each other. And more than just increasing the amount of data we have, we now have unprecedented access to tools, many of them open source or free tools, that allow us to collect, analyze, and understand all of that data. So at the risk of sounding a little bit grandiose, I really feel that we are witnessing a fundamental shift in the way that humanity operates. And every person in this room is a pioneer in that data frontier. And that's incredibly exciting. And we are a very excited, we are a very energetic group as well. Uh, and we are not the kinds of people who are just working on data nine to five. We're the types of people who are tweeting about the data we've been working on on our lunch breaks. We're creating blog posts about the data that we got that we worked on after hours. Uh, the guys from Kaggle are here at Strata. They're a great example. The data scientists are willing to take their time to solve really difficult problems in their spare time. Uh, we had Rachel Stern come talk to us yesterday and tell us about hackathons for the city. We're increasingly seeing hackathons as a really great example of where data scientists and coders come together, spend their spare time uh, to really work on problems that can help the world or they can really create really great things. So it's an exciting time. We're an incredibly exciting group to be working in this. And uh, you know, it's amazing to see all these people can come together for maybe the first time in history to work with more data than they've ever had before, to work with tools that they've never had before, use cutting edge data analysis, cutting edge machine learning to build really great things. And the results of all this energy, the results of all this excitement, when I go out, the results of all this are well, they're kind of unfulfilling sometimes. I mean, here is a, here's an app that helps you park your car. Uh, here's an app that changes the uh, wallpaper on your iPhone. And I've put up mobile apps here from Hack Days, but the same applies to your Facebook clones, the same applies to the next restaurant review app. And don't get me wrong, I, I love these apps. These apps are fantastic. Drew and I use these apps all the time. They're really great apps, but I can't help but feel that they're sort of bourgeois applications of data analysis. These are, these are I know this might rankle a few people, but these are applications that I feel make very comfortable lives ever so slightly more comfortable. And you know, if we're going to be putting all this effort, this amazing energy behind a really fundamental shift in the way humans are behaving, shouldn't we be doing more with it than making sure that never again Netflix suggests 500 days of summer when it really should have suggested Notting Hill? <laughs> I think that's, you know, I think so. I think we should be doing something a little bit more. And so at the same time, before we start throwing around terms like hacking poverty or hacking the environment, I think it's important to remember that there are lots of groups out there that are spending their time trying to make the world a better place every day. There are groups like UNICEF who are fighting for the rights of children around the globe, groups like City Harvest who are working to feed the city's poor and hungry, and groups like the Innocence Project who are working to exonerate people who are innocent and wrongfully accused and put on death row. And of course, there are a slew of other nonprofits and NGOs in this space that work every day to try to make our lives a little bit better. And what you may not know, but probably won't come as much of a surprise, is that they're all sitting on lots of data. There's data that they collect about their operations. There's data they collect about their projects. There's data that they perform as research. And as we lear we've learned this week, there's a huge open data movement as well. So the government and third parties are releasing huge amounts of data that dovetails with these missions for social good. And so you have a huge amount of information that could be used to improve our lives, and yet no one's really looking at it. Well, why is no one really looking at it? Well, understandably, a lot of these groups have much bigger issues that they need to worry about. You know, they're incredibly resource constrained. And so they're much more focused on worrying about where their next donation comes from, how many members they have. Are they actually doing the work they promised they would do? Are they creating those houses? Are they spreading that food across the city? And so they have a lot on their plate. And even if they want to look at data, they just don't have the resources for it. So these are groups that really don't have the time, don't have the energy to even understand Excel, much less something like Hadoop or many of the big data solutions that we've seen here this week. So it seems like we have a fairly obvious matching problem. On the one hand, we have an incredibly excited group of data scientists, data analysts, using the most cutting edge tools in machine learning and data science that the world has ever seen, spending their spare time working on very difficult problems, but don't necessarily have great social channels for that. And then you have people like NGOs and nonprofits working very hard to improve the world, generating lots of data and sitting under the same data deluge that we all are, but no one to really look at it. So I hope that you're all asking the same question that I was asking myself, is uh, can't we get these two together? And that is exactly what Data Without Borders is designed to address. 
So Brisley Data Without Borders is a pro bono data scientist exchange where we match data scientists with nonprofits and NGOs to work on their data in the service of humanity. Uh, we're set up for both long-term and short-term engagements. And we really want to emphasize that we're interested in addressing the entire data pipeline. So we're not just these gunslinging analysts who come in and throw down a p-value or a bar chart, but we really want to address the entire flow from collecting data, both what you collect and how you collect it, how you manage that data once you've got it, uh, all the way up through the more interesting things, perhaps like analysis or visualization or the creation of tools around that data. So thanks, Jake. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what it is that we're actually planning on doing as an organization. So we have a series of goals, uh, some of which are sort of, as Jake mentioned, long and short term. But really what we want to do is we want to get in and really try to immediately assist those uh, NGOs and nonprofits that really are in need of this help, right? So we want to get in there and start to build this community. Jake and I talk a lot about building bridges between these two communities. And part of what we want to transfer over that bridge are skills from both sides, right? So we know everyone in this room, very, very skilled technically. Um, lots of new technology, but on the other side of that, we have some really interesting problems on the NGO side. So we want to build that bridge so we can create this community and this, this sort of, um, you know, motion for collaboration that we think is really, really important. is a big part of our mission as an organization. Um, so again, there's these two goals. Uh, one is the long-term goal. So, you know, we know that, as Jake mentioned, there's lots and lots of these uh, of people in the technical side who want to get involved in projects. Now, there are large companies like Google and Facebook and LinkedIn who allow and, and encourage their employees to do something that they're interested in in their spare time or even provide them with 10, 20% of their time to go work on something interesting. What we'd like to do is say, hey, we know an interesting project and it might match the passion that you have for, you know, for UNICEF or for City Harvest or any number of organizations. So that the long-term goal is really to be a, a group that can find those people and those organizations and make that match. But in the short term, we'd like to have events. Um, you know, we've, taught, we've heard a lot about hackathons and the value of hackathons. We want to do something like that, but slightly different. And we're calling this a data dive. So what a data dive is, is a weekend long event whereby Jake and I and the rest of uh, the Data Without Borders organization try to bring together these two communities, actually have them sit together in a room and work through problems, right? So because it's a short event, only 24 to 48 hours, we're really looking for those quick wins. How can we get into the data really fast, look around, use some of the technical tools that all of us are familiar with and use, and understand what's going on in this data? But it's very important that we make the distinction, this is not a hackathon. Jake talked a bit about the bourgeois use of uh, data science and data analytics. You know, it would be great if someone came to our event and decided to build an app, but that's not really uh, what we're, we're promoting or we're pushing. We're really interested in the analysis. You know, Jake and I come more from the statistical background. We're very interested in understanding what's going on. Those of you who uh, were in the LinkedIn talk yesterday from uh, looking at the economist side of data science, that's sort of the way that we think about problems. We're, under, we're interested in trying to understand how the world works, right? And we want to know how these NGOs' data inform us about that. Um, again, this is a collaborative thing. So the, the data dives will be these events where, where the groups are sitting with each other. This is not a, you have some data, throw it over the wall, the nerds hack on it for a little while, and then they throw the answers back. We want people sitting together, talking about issues. Why is this data interesting? Why did they even get involved in it? And how can these two people work together? And of course, through that process, there's a lot of, of, of knowledge transfer. We get this educational benefit where data scientists learn about the problems that companies who are interested in ad optimization want to know about, and how can data science actually improve that? So uh, some people in this room may know this, but I'd like to just re, uh, sort of re-announce it to the world. We are having our very first ever data dive uh, in a few weeks, October 14th to the 16th, right here in New York City. If you haven't heard about it, we highly encourage you to go to the website at dwb.cc slash nykickoff. Uh, we're announcing today for the first time our NGO partners. So we have three NGOs that are going to be uh, joining us for this event. First is the Microfinance Information Exchange. This is a really interesting organization that tracks and tries to collect data on all of the microfinance loans that happen throughout the world. And they have some really interesting problems around collecting that data, as well as trying to understand what happens on the other end of it. What's going on in these loans? Uh, what is the long-term or short-term effect of them? And then, of course, if you were here earlier in the week, you heard from uh, the UN Global Pulse organization. This group uh, is a really wonderful and high-energy group inside the UN that sort of is the umbrella and sits 
inside the UN to try to understand all of their data streams. The UN is a massive organization, and there's just so much data going in and coming out of that that they have the task of trying to understand that. So they're going to come, bring some of the agency's data, and we're going to try and sit down with them and understand it. And then finally, we have the New York chapter of the uh, American Civil Liberties Union coming with some really interesting local data about the NYPD and the stop and frisk uh, policy. If you're, a, if you're a local New Yorker, you might know about this. If not, it wasn't really national news, but we're really excited to have them. We think there's a lot of interesting stuff that can come out of it. Now, the second big announcement, which we haven't said to anyone yet, is we're, we're going on the road. So, for those of you uh, who don't live in New York and can't participate, we're going to come to you. And the first place we're coming next is San Francisco. So, yay, yay for San Francisco. Um, we'll be there November 4th to the 6th. So, if you're an NGO or a data hacker, people like uh, all of us in the room, we really want to see you there. If you're in the Bay Area, please come and help us out and check it out. So, go to the website. It's dwb.cc slash sfkickoff. We're very creative with our names. Uh, and go check it out. Of course, not the whole data world doesn't exist in New York and San Francisco, and we recognize that. So we're going even further on the road. We have lots of plans to go international. So next stop's London, Chicago, DC, and beyond. So if you want to host a, a data dive, and you think that there's organizations and a, and a group in your community where we could work with you to make this thing happen, come to us. Email us. It's just uh, contact at datawithoutborders.cc. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's going on in your communities. Um, so that's it. We'd really like to thank everyone here for giving us the opportunity to come out here, sort of reintroduce Data Without Borders to the world. Um, here's our contact information. And I, I think I just want to add to that, to what Drew's saying, uh, and just to say that everyone who's either in this room, uh, who is out there, who emailed us when we first came out with this idea uh, from all over the globe, saying that they could help us out, the people who spent time having conversations with us to help flesh out this idea, we really owe this to you. There's a huge movement behind this. We're incredibly excited about the possibility to change things with this. And so we really owe it to all the people, many of whom are in this room, uh, who really helped us out uh, in getting this rolling. So uh, we hope to see you all out there uh, in the field. And I think, uh, you know, in closing, uh, Tim O'Reilly had given a talk Wednesday night where he said uh, that, that virtue is remembering what you want to do. Uh, and so hopefully this can serve as a reminder uh, to some of us. So thank you all. Thanks very and much. Hope to see you out there. Yeah. Thank you.